Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. This week, I'm doing something a little different from my weekly devlog. So if you're new, consider subscribing for updates on the progress of my game and more videos like this one. Recently, I watched a video by Brackies, where he posed a challenge to code an entire game in only 10 minutes. I thought it was such a great idea to challenge yourself when making a small game, and at the same time, make a video that could also be used as a learning tool. So I began thinking of another challenge idea I could try out myself. The idea I came up with was simple. Code an entire game in only one line of code. The game itself had to be interesting, however not too complicated. So I decided on creating a clone of the famous or infamous mobile game, Flappy Bird. What the hell? Is this that goddamn Angry Bird shit? No, this is Flappy Birds. <sighs> With that being said, let's jump straight into how I did it. I started off by creating a new project, changed the build target to iOS, and then imported all of the basic Flappy Bird assets into my Unity project. This included all of the textures and sound effects. In order to make the sprites the correct sizes in the game, I needed to set each of their pixels per unit attributes based on the size of the orthographic camera. By looking at the background image, we can see that the height is 512 pixels, and as seen in the scene view, the height of the orthographic view is 10 units tall. Therefore, the height of each unit should be 512 divided by 10 pixels tall, which is exactly 51.2 pixels. And so that is what I set as the pixels per unit attribute for each sprite. I was now ready to start creating the actual script. I started off by defining all of the fields I would be using to control the different game objects and their prefabs I would be instantiating. This included the bird, background, base and pipes. The bird and background were simple to instantiate, as they just had a set starting position and there was no need to instantiate more of them as time went on. The base and pipes however were a different story. Both of these objects have to be constantly moving and many of them need to be instantiated at the same time. So I needed to create two arrays of game objects, each having a length of two. This is because there will be at most two bases and two pipes in the game's view at any one time. Just for clarity, I defined a pipe to be a top and bottom pair of pipes, because the vertical distance between two pipes never changes. I used a for loop and iterated through each array, instantiating them at their respective positions. For the bases, the first base should be at an X position of 0, and the second base should be at a position of the width of the view away from the center, which is 10 units multiplied by the aspect ratio of 9 over 16. I decided that the pipes would be 4 units apart, and the height at which the pipes would be spawned was a random number between negative 2 and 3. Once I had that ready and the objects were all spawning as expected, I moved on to player movement. Whenever the player taps on the screen, the bird flaps its wings and flies upwards. I achieved this by adding an upwards impulse force to the player. I also had to set the velocity to zero whenever the player flew upwards, to keep the amount at which the player flies upwards when pressing constant. Next, I moved on to adding rotation. I achieved this by setting the player's rotation to 30 degrees each time the player flew upwards and then decrease the rotation by a specified rotation rate over time. One thing I had to edit when doing this was having to change add relative force to add force, because relative force was affected by rotating the player. Once I finished with this, it was time to move on to adding movement to the objects. I started with the base, where I simply looped through each one, and then when it was at an X position less than negative 10 times 9 over 16 units away from the center, I destroyed it and instantiated another at positive 10 times 9 over 16 units away from the center. Here you can see this working. Next up was doing the same for the pipes. The method was similar and all I had to change was the fact that it was now 4 units apart and the height changed each time. All the main mechanics were basically done, and I was only an hour in. 
Next up, however, was actually turning it into a game. A main part of this was adding collisions and triggers for points. I began by adding a metal box collider to the pipe prefab and set it to be a trigger. A problem I was facing was how to check for collisions when I wasn't on the game object I was checking collisions for. But after a bit of time, I eventually settled on instead adding the script to the bird itself. I would then handle all collisions in there. Now that collisions were working fine, I moved on to the dying mechanics. In Flappy Bird, when the player dies, they are able to fall through the pipes and rotate completely downwards. I replicated this by disabling the box colliders of the pipes and then setting the maximum rotation angle to 90 degrees when the player died. Now that everything was working, I moved on to adding a scoring system for the game, where every time the player flew through the pipes, it would increase their score by 1. Once the player died, it would then check the player's high score in player prefs, and then compare that to their current score, updating it if it is higher. And that was how I ended up creating Fluffy Bird in a single line of code. Before I finish this video off, I thought of improving the game slightly, so that I could upload it to itch.io. That way, you can all play the game and try and beat my high score. Just to make it look a little better, I made it so that the bird flapped its wings, and also change the font of the score. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Leave a comment on what challenges I should tackle next, and then I could maybe turn this into a series of game dev challenges from your suggestions. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and remember to subscribe to follow along on the development of my mobile game, or for more videos like this. And with that, I'll see you next week.